I want to give you a sense of where NATO is in the cyber defense domain, what the priorities are. But let me first just very quickly give you a sense of where NATO is coming from. Uh, 1992, during the uh, Yugoslav, the actions in former Yugoslavia, uh, NATO had um, a first encounter with those times of cyber, uh, cyber events. But I think it was a decade that passed, so until 2002 at the Prague Summit, where the subject of cyber security called then, then afterwards cyber defense, became part of the political agenda of the, of the alliance. And the first steps were taken um, uh, in terms of uh, developing strategy in this sense, which was, and some, some concrete uh, capability in, in investment, which was then reviewed in 2006 at the Riga summit. Then two major events happened, and they were well known. 2007, um, uh, Estonia, um, major distributed uh, disruption of, of service with all the, uh, all the consequences that were well known. Uh, and one year later, 2008, uh, the war in Georgia, where um, one could see it was the first time that uh, a significant cyber dimension was visible in a military uh, action. And this generated a strategic shift in the approach of NATO. On, 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 on cyber issues. Uh, and it was recognized um, at the 2010 strategic concept that um, the development and use of um, destructive cyber tools threatened national and Euro Atlantic security and stability. And as with this recognition, it was clearly that NATO was sending us a, a signal that it, this domain was starting to be connected with NATO core, core business which was uh, allied um, security and stability. So uh, that was the, the inflection point, 2010, new strategic concept. What followed? In 2011, in June, uh, NATO developed a um, new policy, I would say the policy uh, on cyber uh, defense. And I know uh, Heli was part of the founding uh, parents of, of this uh, process uh, before she moved to the other side of uh, Brussels, uh, to, the, to, the, to the EU. And this policy included a number of issues, but I, I want, I want to, to focus on the mo most essential. A governance mechanism and structure. Uh, so starting from the you know, political oversight by the North Atlantic Council, the, the lead uh, committees, the Cyber Defense Management Board, which was including uh, all the bodies that had relevance in the cyber um, uh, domain. Um, it was also uh, in, in the context of a creation of a new division, the Emerging Security Challenges uh, Division, which was created in 2010 on the way to the strategic uh, concept, and where the cyber section, I would say, is one of the sections with the highest uh, profile. Um, then, beyond the, the governance uh, uh, structure, it included some very clear priorities, and then it led to an action plan based on these priorities. Now, let me go through, uh, uh, through them. The first and foremost priority uh, was, was defined and mandated by nations uh, being the protection of NATO's own uh, networks, and not just any protection, the ambition, the level of ambition was to have a centralized protection of all the uh, NATO entities, starting with headquarters, command structures, locations of agencies, and so on and so forth. Um, based on this, uh, the, there was a, a, whole, a whole process of implementation started, and last October, so only le less than a month um, ago, um, we um, uh, could, we were reported by the NCIA, NATO um, Communication Information Agency, about reaching this level of centralized uh, protection of 51 NATO, uh, NATO sites. Now, uh, let me tell you that uh, it was defined due to the kind of uh, automaticity of the of a, of a bidding process and, and how uh, military operate in defense investment uh, the requirement was so-called full operational capability 
of the NATO Computer Incidents Response uh, Center, the NCIRC. Uh, the, the fact is and the truth is that uh, in this field, uh, there's never such thing like a full, full operational capability. Um, uh, I'm actually uh, uh, preparing um, a memo to, to, to make it clear that um, what we are actually have achieved, this centralized protection, but it's the first iteration of a system that will upgrade itself uh, constantly based on uh, the analysis of incidents and traffic, which then should inform the next level of protection in a kind of spiral mode, spiral zero, spiral one, and, and so on and, and, and so forth. So um, linked to this priority number one or zero, this protection of NATO's uh, own network, was the issue of establishing the critical dependencies of NATO networks upon national uh, networks. And here we established a methodology, and so far nine of the allies have reported their uh, critical uh, dependencies. The next step after having identified all these uh, dependencies upon national uh, systems will be the establishment of, and, and implementation of the minimum standard of protection for that level that would imply not to make NATO system vulnerable because of national systems who are connected might be, might, might be vulnerable. The next priority, the next aspect um, of importance is uh, that of assisting allies to develop their own capabilities. As in every field of, of defense, um, there is a national responsibility to develop capabilities. But NATO uh, has a role through a couple of vehicles. One is the so-called defense planning process, through which capability targets are established and then implemented with, in, in a planned manner over a period of time. Uh, other uh, ways of having, uh, um, assuring this uh, facilitating uh, role um, means information sharing, training, education, and exercising. And, and by the way, we just had an uh, exercise, a civil emergency exercise, who finished a couple of um, weeks ago, which had a cyber component, and we'll have a dedicated exercise cyber coalition in nine days, if I'm not afraid, if I'm not um, uh, uh, mistaken, um, which, will, which will be um, uh, held uh, in the um, cyber range of Estonia, but with the um, participation of allies, plus, for the first time, uh, a number of partners, Ireland included. Um, other domains are the inclusion of the cyber dimension in the contingency planning and operational planning, because in any military operation, there is a growing cyber uh, dimension and, of course, cyber defense uh, dimension. Last but not least, the application of the concept of smart defense, of having this multinational uh, projects among uh, group of, groups of allies, to get capabilities as a cheaper, at a, as a cheaper price. We have used this in, in other domains, from strategic airlift capabilities to allied ground surveillance, uh, and now there is a good focus of doing smart cyber defense um, uh, projects. Let me go to the next um, uh, aspect, uh, and that is uh, linked to the, I think, fundamental question, the link between cyber defense and the uh, uh, common defense in general, to the famous Article 5. Here, um, allied debate has led to the conclusion that there is a benefit in keeping the ambiguity vis-a-vis uh, um, -vis the when article, when there is a situation of a cyber attack that could uh, or generate the possibility of uh, invoking uh, Article uh, 5. The conclusion is, on a case-by-case -case basis, we'll, we'll, we'll get there when, when, when we we'll see it. And frankly, uh, the, this was also uh, in the past. It was never defined, not even in the, in the treaty, the exact moment or, or uh, context in which uh, uh, Article 5 and common defense will be, will be invoked. So it's based on allies, uh, allied consultation. There's also um, a, a decision on an ambiguity of how NATO would respond in a, uh, in a situation of massive uh, cyber attack, for example. 
And there's no assumption that will be only a cyber um, uh, response. Then uh, the, the, uh, the other um, key aspect is related to the way the alliance uh, can assist one ally in, in situation of cyber incidents that are below the, any threshold of Article 5. And here, um, there is a consensus of using NATO as a coordinating institution, as a clearinghouse of possible bilateral assistance, as it's in, in, in other situations, for example, the, the use of uh, Patriot missiles to, to Turkey. It's actually a contribution by three distinct allies, but the coordination element is done by, uh, by, um, uh, by the alliance. Uh, and also um, uh, the fact that uh, um, there, will be, there will be future debates of how to use common funded assets once they are matured in order to give such kind of support. For example, the um, computer incident response um, center includes also a rapid reaction team, which is um, actually dedicated for those 51 sites that are in a centralized uh, protection. And um, so far, there is no decision or consensus to use them in any other uh, location or place. But this, once this cap common fund uh, um, capabilities uh, mature, there will be probably um, a, a debate to, to, to look at this dimension. Then the partnership dimension. Uh, NATO has developed partnership relations with about 41 partners across the globe. They're more partners than allies uh, at this moment. But cyber has become a, a dimension in, in, this, uh, in many of the individual partnership programs. The approach is, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, based also on the depthness of interaction, of interoperability. And, um, for example, um, there are um, so far um, seven um, non-NATO nations uh, that have been uh, invited to participate in the exercise based exactly on the fact that uh, they have this high level of interoperability uh, and uh, connectivity with uh, NATO and activism in, in, in the partnership um, domain. But other aspects like uh, awareness, education and training uh, is, or, or st consultation staff to staff uh, are, are open and happening uh, with, a, with a larger um, group of allies. Last but not least, uh, the cooperation with um, the partnership with um, uh, uh, industry, the private sector, uh, is considered to be key since the private sector owns the biggest part of the networks and also pushes forward the technology. Uh, the NATO Industry Advisor Group, the NIAG, is uh, at this moment performing of an, an analysis and it's to be delivered uh, next spring of how the industry sees the way they would like NATO to cooperate with the, the private sector. So based on this study, the allies would, would do the analysis and, and, and bring, uh, I mean, decide on the, the policy in this, um, in this field. Um, this is, in, in a nutshell, uh, the, the moment, uh, the, the, the cyber uh, defense um, approach um, in, uh, in NATO. Uh, also, I showed you, I gave you a sense of um, what will be the, the perspective just to give you a sense of, of dynamics, in 2011 and 12, the political attention at the North Atlantic Council level on cyber uh, was reflected in two NACs. I mean, one in 2011, one in 2000, each year one, one NAC. In the first half, first six months of this year, we had a, about three council meetings. Uh, in this uh, dedicated to this subject. In the next six weeks, after about other three um, council uh, meetings, and um, with concrete taskings from the um, uh, ministerials, including the one of keeping connectivity with what happens uh, in allied nations, like, such as the United States or other international organizations like the EU on development of standards and, and, and approach, so we don't want to duplicate. Um, it is um, an issue, a matter of uh, growing concern. It is also a matter that will, where e even though there has been a 
significant investment uh, made in terms of resources, human money, and, and uh, time and political attention, we are conscious that we are at the beginning of, uh, of a process, and there's much more um, uh, to follow. Also, to make very, uh, a very clear point about the conceptual um, approach, by the way, NATO doesn't speak about cybersecurity. It speaks about cyber defense, which is something narrower and focuses on the more, let's say, strategic um, threats in this uh, domain. But we are conscious about the blurred, uh, let's say, uh, limits or borders uh, uh, between the, the, the other domains. So what happens in the field of cyber criminality interests NATO as well, and I suppose that what happens at the strategic analysis level interests the, the cyber crime level. NATO is also bringing together the analysis coming from, let's say, the traffic uh, of, on, on our uh, systems together with the other analogies coming from the pure intelligence uh, which brings us to motives uh, and uh, states. And my last, uh, last point on, on, on this one uh, is also that we're not speaking about NATO warfare in, NATO, in, in, in this organization, which uh, I think underscores the fact that it's only the purely def defensive dimension that we are mandated to, to address. So not, we're not speaking about NATO offensive or not even active defense. We're speaking about cyber defense, period. Thank you.